Michigan State and Purdue no longer the only teams in the Sweet 16 without a key component to their rosters. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you on your previews presented by State Farm. The 2-11 matchup in the East Regional, West Virginia against Washington. Let's bring in our CBSSports.com college basketball columnist Gary Parrish, who, by the way, did a fantastic job on March Madness On Demand over the course of the first two rounds. Uh, Gary, West Virginia against Washington and Truck Bryant, broken bone in his foot, not going to be able to go for the rest of the tournament. How does this affect the way that Bob Huggins approach is this ball game? Well, it, you know, this is not the type of year where you time of year where you ever want to be losing uh, your starting point guard uh, and, and somebody in your rotation. Now, you know, some have pointed out that Trucks minutes have actually gone down recently, and that Joe Mazzula has been averaging 25 minutes a game the past four games, and that is all true. But still, um, those are different types of players, and Hugs likes to use them in different ways. Now his options are limited, and uh, Mazzula's minutes are probably going to have to go up to above 30. This is not ideal. And, and it's not ideal, and Mazzula, you know, he injured his shoulder in the game against Davidson back of two th December, or December 2008. You know, he can't shoot. Like, physically, he can't shoot, Gary. I mean, he hasn't attempted a three-pointer all season. So not only does this affect the team in losing a point guard, I mean, now you only have four guys that can actually score. No, I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, a lot of times when we talk about college basketball players and guards in particular, we'll say, ah, the kid can't shoot. And we don't mean that literally. With Missoula, we literally mean he cannot shoot the basketball uh, from a physical standpoint because of the shoulder injury. So, I mean, you know, when you're the opposing coach and you know that, it just makes everything uh, easier to defend. Uh, you know, Texas ran into it a little bit. Uh, with Doge Balbe um, before he was injured, and it wasn't that he wasn't physically capable, he just could not make shots. So, you know, even Rick Barnes, out of his own mouth, said, you know, we're playing four on five on offense, and that, that's, uh, that's why they had to make a change there and go with Jacobin Brown. This is similar. Lorenzo Romar now knows that he can play off of, uh, of Missoula. He can double the post from Missoula. He can run people um, at Ebanks from Missoula. And when you can do all of those things, it makes scoring very, very difficult for West Virginia. And the other part is they have to, like Michigan State, go into this game doing something they haven't had to do, and that's playing without Bryant for the course of the season. Let's go at this from Washington's perspective here, uh, Gary. Uh, offensively, the Huskies have been fantastic in this tournament, the whole season, 80 points a game. They scored 80 against Marquette. They scored 82 against New Mexico. Uh, how do you think they perform offensively against West Virginia's defense? Well, I mean, they're, they're really playing well. I mean, let's not forget, West Virginia is very big up front, physical up front, and, and a good overall defensive team. So I'd be shocked if West uh, I mean, if Washington comes out and just puts a big number on them and, and, and really embarrasses them. But uh, this Washington team, as we've talked about before, is a team that was ranked in the top 20 uh, in the preseason, a team that has talented guys from Isaiah Thomas to um, uh, the, the Abdul Gaddy, who hasn't had a great year, but is still a, a very well thought of player. And so, you know, you're, you're playing a team with, with great, back, uh, great backcourt and then obviously Quincy Pondexter. So, um, you know, this is an 11 seed on your bracket, but probably in terms of talent, nowhere close to that. And an 11 seed that 12 years ago in an 11 seed made the Sweet 16 and then lost to his two seed out of the Big East. So a very similar situation, obviously different components from 12 years ago. Gary, who wins it and who's the key player in this ballgame? I, I still think uh, West Virginia wins the game. I, I, again, uh, if you take a step back, yes, this is, this is a tough, tough loss. But uh, Missoula is tough enough to get you, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. And I'm not going to doubt uh, Deshaun Butler at this point. I mean, he's been phenomenal really uh, all year long, but sort of came to the forefront in the Big East tournament, has been good again in the NCAA tournament. And I just think they're tough enough to get through this game. Eventually, I think not having uh, depth in the guard position will, will be a problem, particularly if they have to play Kentucky and John Wall and Eric Bledsoe in the uh, Elite Eight. But that's, a, that's another discussion for another day. I think they're good enough to get past this one and West Virginia win the game. All right, Gary Parrish, thank you very much. Uh, you'll be at the South Regional in Houston. Look forward to reading everything you got from there. We'll miss you on March Madness on Demand, bud. You're the best, Gary. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, folks, for more on this game, keep it right here with CBSSports.com. Of course, it's Thursday night, 7, 27 p.m. Eastern on CBS, and, of course, on March Madness On Demand as well. For Gary Parrish, I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care, folks.